Um, well, I think it was um, disappointing in that the expectation was there would be a meaningful vote, uh, and in the end that didn't happen. Uh, and the, such, the, the legislation had been predicated on uh, requiring the government to come back with a deal. I think there were many that perhaps questioned whether the Prime Minister would be able to do so. Uh, I think he's achieved a huge amount in a very short period of time. Uh, and achieved a deal that addressed what was the central concern of Parliament in the meaningful votes, uh, the preceding meaningful votes, which was the issue of the backstop. Uh, and by making those changes to the Northern Ireland Protocol, having a consent mechanism uh, to address the democratic concerns that were with the previous arrangements, uh, I think he achieved uh, a huge amount in a very short period of time. Uh, I think the deal is a win uh, not just for the UK, but for the EU as well, who want to see the UK leave in a smooth and orderly way. Um, and it was obviously frustrating, I think, for many of us on Saturday that we were not able to have the meaningful vote. The, the next issue will be that the Speaker will rule on whether um, a Section 13 motion can be taken, um, which will be a decision for the Speaker after defence questions today at 3.30. Is the government's plan to introduce the withdrawal agreement bill today? And, and maybe you could say a little bit about what will, what will be in it. Well, I think because these things are moving at a very quick pace, we will take one step at a time. Uh, clearly, um, as you're very well aware, Lord Wood, uh, in order to ratify the deal that the Prime Minister has reached, uh, the law as it stands requires both a Section 13 meaningful vote uh, but it also requires the legislation to be passed uh, in the form of the Withdrawal Agreement Bill, um, as I think we touched on at our previous session. That is a significant piece of legislation, uh, and we have a finite amount of time to the 31st of October. So I think within government there is a desire to get on to that. Many of the issues have been considered and debated uh, considerably in both houses, uh, but you know, the first issue is to address the Section 13 today. One last, just one, one last small question on this. So, with, with, with regard to the process, it's been widely commented that the amount of time that the Parliament will have is quite compressed, given mm. comparisons with previous major acts in the European field, like Maastricht. Yes. Wonder what your, your your thought is on that, and also, what's the government's general approach to the problem that may well emerge that amendments to the withdrawal bill may <coughs> conflict with the treaty signed in Brussels last week? Sure. So. Uh, um, it, is, it is the case, I mean, it's a matter of a fact that the Maastricht Bill, uh, which some colleagues around the table will be very familiar with, uh, I think was introduced as a three-clause bill, amended to eight clauses and took over 400 days uh, of parliamentary sitting, so uh, I'm sure many around the table uh, remember that period extremely well. Um, I think what we have seen from this House of Commons, uh, in particular with the Cooper legislation and also the Ben uh, Burt legislation, uh, is that uh, it is a house that is willing to expedite business uh, where it is, um, is seen to be in the interest of the house to do so. And I think there are many within Parliament that are concerned about the consequence of no deal. Uh, the chair touched on in his opening uh, remarks the fact that uh, any extension would require the agreement of the EU, so there's no guarantee uh, in respect of any extension. Uh, and therefore, having secured a good deal, a deal that addresses the central concern that Parliament had, and mindful of the fact that many of the issues are still to be, uh, are still issues for the future agreement, this is just the winding down provisions, uh, and large parts of the withdrawal agreement have been accessible since last November and debated repeatedly in the House since last November, uh, then it is our expectation that the House can move quickly uh, to implement that legislation. And if it's a conflict between the, the amended bill and the treaty? Well, I mean, we're committed as a government to leaving on the 31st of October. Um, and as I say, that this House of Commons has moved quickly uh, on other legislation. Uh, and I think it's also because the debate is so often through the prism of the UK, it is also just keeping stock of the fact that this has to be ratified in the European Parliament as well, not only in the UK Parliament. So we need to move uh, in order to do that.